winter blows into Hayden Valley, a land of deep snows and Arctic conditions in the heart of Yellowstone National Park. Here, temperatures can plunge to 40 below. Snow drifts up to 20 feet or more. Few animals can survive winter under these conditions. A few bison winter here, losing energy with every step. Foxes must break the crust for every meal. Once, this valley was the heart of a vast volcano. Its remnant leaks out in steam and hot springs. Wolves have not called this valley home for more than 80 years, until now. 10 years after they were reintroduced into Yellowstone. Two wolves, one gray, the other almost white, have arrived to colonize the valley. The couple, in their prime, have already reared litters together. It remains to be seen if this new Hayden Valley pack can hunt enough food to survive the fierce winters. And whether they can avoid the attacks of the much larger Molly's pack, expanding north into the Hayden Pack's territory. By the early 1900s, people had nearly eliminated predators like wolves throughout the globe. In the continental US, the species nearly went extinct. Park rangers killed the last wolf in Yellowstone in 1926. But by 1995, in a groundbreaking experiment, the United States Congress voted that wolves be restored to the West. So, 41 wolves were relocated from Canada to Yellowstone. Six weeks later, when researchers cut open the fences, one by one, each wolf gathered its courage and leapt free. In the next decade, wolves filled Yellowstone's fertile northern range, one of the largest elk wintering grounds in the world. The Swan Lake pack grew to 24 wolves. Here the pack rallies, reinforcing their bonds with each other and letting other wolves know they will defend their territory. The Druid Peak pack grew to 37 members, training generations of powerhouse hunters and seeding new packs. These druids choose prey that are malnourished, sick, or injured. When the Druid Pack dwindled, the Slough Creek Pack began a land grab. This Druid pup runs for his life. When several huge packs formed after reintroduction, Biologists wondered if wolves would overpopulate Yellowstone. Yellowstone researchers discovered that wolves themselves limited their growth. When populations climb, packs wage territorial wars that knock down their numbers. The dominant female of the Agate Creek pack picks up the scent of encroaching slough pack wolves. In Yellowstone, with such dense wolf numbers, one pack is never on top for long. At one time, the howls of the Druid, Slough, and Agate packs could be heard along Yellowstone's entire northern range. But for 10 years after reintroduction, no pack had ventured south into Hayden Valley as permanent residents, not until the white wolf and her pale gray mate. In the future, DNA analysis would show that these two traveled from different packs to find each other. The pair call out to discover if other wolves have staked claim to this valley. 
If a pack were already in residence, it would answer the howls. Far from the competition on Yellowstone's northern range, this couple has found a territory of their own. Satisfied that there's no rival pack here, White Wolf sets off to explore. But other canids share the valley. Coyotes, like this mother and her mate, became top dogs after the wolves were killed off in the park. Wolves often dig out coyote dens and kill the pups. They view any other dog, wild or domestic, as competition. White Wolf is scouting prey. These coyote pups have been trained to run from strangers, especially big ones, like White Wolf. Perhaps the wolf considers digging up the den, but something changes her mind. When their young are in danger, coyote parents forget fear and they fight. The wolf is bigger and knows how to kill coyotes. But suddenly, she's outnumbered. Or the coyotes just have more at stake than she does. She has pups of her own back at the den. Her yearling daughter is babysitting the two pups. Sometimes she's at a loss and can't get the jump on these two rambunctious youngsters. But like most yearlings, or any wolves, she adores pups. Pebbles invite explorations into cause and effect. They roll down a slope when you push them. White Wolf just wants a nap. At two to three months, the pups still use their den for protection against bears and other wolves but they no longer retreat to the hole for warmth. Rain is no hardship. Thunderstorms come frequently during the summer in these high mountain valleys. The rains will dissipate quickly. The dark yearling has gone hunting. She's too small to take an elk by herself, but she has a bead on a beaver, since it is smaller prey. Perhaps there is a chance. Though about 90% of wolves' diet is elk, they test and sometimes kill a variety of animals. But the yearling comes up with nothing for her troubles. She's no match for this mature beaver. He gives his parting shot. The bison collect into massive herds before their thunderous mating season in late summer. Calves depend on their mothers for milk and their herd for protection and learning. They cannot let a swift moving current separate them from the herd. Melting snow waters the landscape and swells the rivers, nurturing birds and waterfowl. A heron fishes in the river.
Hayden Valley nestles within a forested caldera, the mouth of the ancient volcano. The dormant volcano, now a hot spot beneath the Earth's crust, rises in geysers, steam vents called fumaroles, and hot springs. The volcanic soil nourishes plants that feed deer, bison, and elk. Elk rut, or mate, before the winter. Not far south of Hayden Valley lies Pelican Valley, territory of another pack, the Molly's Pack. The Molly's Pack are big boned wolves and numerous. It's a large pack. Sometimes male grizzly bears follow packs of wolves in hopes of stealing their carcasses when they kill. This bear, decides to travel with the Molly's wolves, almost like another pack member, although a slow one. When he finds the pack with a kill, he takes over. Now that wolves are back in Yellowstone, bears routinely steal wolf kills. Even 14 wolves can't hold their ground against a mature grizzly bear. Winter is the only season when the wolves get a break from the bears. It's also the season when the Yellowstone Wolf Project puts radio collars on wolves. White wolf's mate, gray male, runs as if for his life. Biologists collar about 30% of each Yellowstone pack. Their work has produced more than 20 years of original wolf research. The researchers collared white wolf. She's now number 540. The Hayden Pack has made it through to January. In addition to white wolf and gray male, the pack includes a yearling and two pups, both female. Biologists identify a group of wolves as a pack once they have a breeding pair, which researchers sometimes call an alpha pair, and at least one pup surviving to December. Hayden Valley's high elevation contributes to the heavy snowfall and violent winters that drive the elk and many bison out. When snow piles up in Hayden Valley, elk herds migrate to Yellowstone's milder northern range, leaving behind the most formidable prey, bison. the pack returns to feed on a bison they've killed. Generally, there's no pecking order at a carcass. When adults kill, everybody in the pack eats. Wolves have evolved to live in packs. Weighing up to 2,000 pounds, a bison can get mired in the valley's heavy snows. Giving wolves the edge in a hunt But this fox is in her element, like the wolves. Foxes and coyotes feed primarily on rodents, prey too small to sustain the much larger wolf. For a little fox, it's a nice sized meal. Hayden Valley offers some unlikely winter habitats. The Yellowstone River, warmed by thermal springs, remains open providing water for this trumpeter swan to winter over. By April, elk begin migrating into Hayden Valley from lower elevations.
Ray Mail is on a hunt. He's positioning himself to make an attack on an elk's throat, a typical maneuver for a large male wolf. He gets ahead of the cow, who is laboring. His two-year-old daughter doesn't have the heft or jaw strength to crush the esophagus, as a larger wolf would. Unlike cougars, wolves' jaws and teeth cannot deliver one clean, killing bite. Rather, wolves repeatedly bite and mash tissue, exhausting both prey and hunter. But that's no help to this cow. Gray male finishes the killing, but then leaves the carcass. Like many prime hunters, he's so winded that he must rest before eating. They will return to feed on the carcass later. The two-year-old rolls in the snow to clean off. Her father uses the grass. This two-year-old seems to be taking after her mom. Her fur is starting to whiten at her ruff. Even the sight of her father stimulates submission in his daughter. Flattened ears, slitted eyes, and a low tail. She approaches at an angle. Anything less would be rude. The younger wolf averts her face as she nears. She greets him with postures reminiscent of puppyhood, licking him as she once did to ask for food. The wolves must swim to the carcass. The wide Yellowstone River splits the Hayden Pack's territory in two. So these wolves often must swim to get from one place to another. Mountainous terrain and river drainages influence the pack's movements and hunting patterns, but their territory also depends on available prey. She swims strongly, showing the resilience of wolves. They have only themselves, their strength and vitality, to depend on for survival. A pack must have a territory that supplies enough food for their pack size. For the Haydens, the river is a minor obstacle. Both sides have ample supplies of elk when the valley is snow-free. White Wolf makes a raised leg urination, followed by a ground scratch. Generally, only the alpha pair leave this territorial marker. She's a mom again and needs the food. She'll nurse the pups and regurgitate partially digested meat as puppy food for them. Wolves waste nothing on a carcass. If bears do not prevent them, pack members consume all the tissues and chew the bones. This two-year-old wolf has come a long way. She has matured into one of the pack's key providers. By two years old, female wolves are accomplished hunters and ready to bear pups. Many strike out on their own to find mates and begin packs. A roll in the snow will clean her muzzle. After rolling in the snow, White Wolf seems invigorated, making a beeline back to the den to bring meat to her pups. While they are waiting, pups find plenty to do. Bears sniffing, the ever-popular rolling, and chasing. The black pup doesn't seem to mind acting as prey. Pups take turns being on the bottom. 
the black pup cannot have been born to the Hayden breeding pair. Black is a dominant gene, so at least one parent had to be black. The two-year-old female hurries to the pups. They lick her lips, stimulating her regurgitations. There's enough for all, and her black pup, though last to the table, gets his share. The pup's glossy black coat comes from his absent father. If food is scarce, the breeding pair will not tolerate any but their own litters. Because there's enough elk, the parents allowed the beta to return home pregnant and raise the pup alongside their own, though her father would never accept her black mate into the pack. For once, the little black pup is ahead of the game. He runs to meet his grandfather, who brings in a deer's skull and antlers, a perfect puppy snack that'll serve as a toy later. The black pup seems thrilled. He alternates between exploring his gift and thanking his grandfather with kisses. But these are also gestures he uses to ask for food. At the main den area, the yearling mouths playing pups. When they try to jump on their older sister, she's had enough. Gray male watches the little black pup chew on the antlers. When White Wolf and the pup's mother arrive, he prevents each adult from horning in on the pup's prize. The two-year-old goes for a drink, a respite from puppy antics and family politics. Nearby, a pup is full of industry. A clod of muddy grass makes a great find. Uh-oh, a larger rival with his tail higher. The yearling and the lighter two-year-old compete for time with the pups. White Wolf can't resist a pup, but she gets no respect for her troubles. Gray male lolls, as his two-year-old daughter grooms him submissively. But he is very affectionate. The dark yearling climbs atop the den, wallowing in pups. Gymnastics can get out of hand. The sight of an adult provokes activity in the pups, but gray male is going hunting, and the pups are too young to follow. Gray male is scoping and scenting for food. He rouses a cow elk. She charges gray male. It's a common sight in Yellowstone elk chasing wolves. Gray male may have passed too near her hidden newborn and the big male has to watch out for a healthy, savvy cow. She weighs about four times what the wolf does. Her hooves are razor sharp. Elk calves, born with little scent, are especially vulnerable in the first seven days of life before they're strong enough to run. Cows leave the calves in high grasses, travel away to browse, and return to nurse their young. The cow doesn't like the look of a hungry wolf with pups to feed.
The two-year-old wolf returns to the den, high above the river in a secluded location. The pack has made a kill. The breeding pair feed ravenously, collecting food in their bellies to bring to the pups and to keep their own bodies and souls together. But the catch is small, a calf. White Wolf snaps and lunges at the dark yearling. Perhaps she wants all of this food for the pups. Gray male is lean from giving away most of his food, and he's patchy from shedding. But the pups are sleek from his care. Still chewing an enormous mouthful, the black pup follows his grandfather. He knows there's more to come. White Wolf is also scruffy, arrives next with a belly full of more food. She too is mobbed by eager pups. Her slight wag belies her exhaustion. Even a tired mom can't resist puppy charms. Gray male cools himself and takes a much needed drink. The black pup thinks he's invited to the bath. A discreet show of teeth says otherwise. But rejection seems to roll off the pup's backs. They've seen this bluster before. The beta two-year-old comes in to give her share of puppy food. With two mothers, gray male, and a big sister yearling feeding them, these pups are well cared for. The black pup has grown strong. He leads his cousins on a scouting party. When the others catch up to him, he invites play. The pups don't need the den for warmth anymore, and the distance they explore on their own expands. Nothing keeps him down. The next generation begins their explorations of moving objects. It helps to have a committee. The black pup will not be outdone. There's always more to be gleaned from observation. Sometimes those pebble critters shoot down from nowhere. Where did they go? The autumn mornings now resonate with the strident challenges of bull elk. Autumn ushers in the elk rut. The bull elk bugles his dominance over other males. He's possessive of the cow herd, called a harem, though the cows actually decide whether to stay or go. But the competition isn't over. During the rut, bull elk, who usually live amicably side by side, are flooded with hormones that drive them to fight. The stakes are high. The dominant bull will mate with most of the herd, but who's the winner takes some sorting out. There's no clear winner, but the bulls separate and return to different harems. As evening descends on Yellowstone, the mating contests will continue. The ascendant moon will observe countless episodes of conflict and survival. Many animals prefer the night for hunting and feeding until morning light. The black pup and his cousins are five months old. Old enough to travel with the pack even if it means a swim. The breeding pair seems less haggard these days. 
They've brought their pack through the toughest months. On an October morning, with temperatures well below freezing, wolves simply find the water refreshing. Black Pup is a robust boy. He outruns the others and catches up with his grandparents. They're on the hunt. They soon catch the scent of a dead bison. A grizzly bear also picks up the odor. Another bear has commandeered the carcass, but he flees as a larger bear saunters in to eat bison. Lots of animals have their eyes on the meat. A grizzly sow with three young cubs thinks about it. The bears are packing on the pounds before hibernation. Only the largest bear can turn over a 2,000-pound carcass, three times his weight. The sow sniffs cautiously, identifying other bears. Male bears are notorious for killing cubs, yet the smell of the meat is too enticing. She edges closer. The dark Hayden yearling has been waiting out the bear. But when the sow turns towards her, she decides to sneak away. Tangling with a mother grizzly is bad for your health. At first, the yearling wolf hustles along, but she stops for one appraising look. It will be several years before any of the cubs succeed in stealing carcasses or chasing off wolves. Late in the day, the bears begin to move off, and gray male comes in. But that attracts the attention of the possessive big bear. No chance for food yet. But the breeding male won't leave without marking nearby with a territorial urination. This is our carcass when the bear clears out. Nearby, White Wolf leads her young. They're hungry. She detects something. It's the sow and her cubs. It's risky, but wolves can sometimes kill bear cubs, especially when a sow has too many to defend. The sow realizes her peril. Meanwhile, a coyote decides to try her luck at the carcass. The coyote calls her mate to share in the feast. That may have been a bad move. A Hayden yearling goes after a competitor she can handle, or so she thinks. The coyote makes sharper turns, and she has backup. The coyotes drive off the young Hayden. She's too far from her pack for help, and the coyotes have no mercy. Gray male rests. He knows there's no more food to be had from the lost bison carcass. The young wolves rally. White Wolf saves her energies. Riding up on each other is playful, but also about status. Holding a muzzle, rubbing a face over the top of another, and climbing up on each other are tender displays of dominance. The black lines and dark lips and eyelids on a gray wolf, or mocha blonde markings on a black, are like stage makeup 
They broadcast a wolf's emotions, clownish, joyful, or angry, and deliver social messages like, let's play, or back off. The two-year-old initiates a hunting party. She's a mother, and the pack needs food. Her dark sister is alert, too. White Wolf has picked up a scent, a cow and calf. The calf seems vigorous, but the powerful wolf easily keeps pace with it. The cow begins to falter. If either cow or calf shows weakness, the wolves have a chance. The beta female pulls ahead. We see only flashes of wolf and calf. But in this race, a life is in the balance. A pup is last to the carcass. It lowers its body into a submissive crouch. When one of her older daughters arrives, White Wolf pins her, tail high, face bristling with teeth. Why so fierce? Perhaps elevated breeding hormones have made her cranky. No one seems upset for long. Wolves are individuals. They may have issues. But full bellies smooth out a lot of wrinkles. They feed together now. They may rest on into the night. The next morning, a bear arrives to see what he may steal. He's met by a charging wolf, the two-year-old mother. She won't give up food easily. Pack members help her chase him off. And the Hayden wolves rally at the carcass. The pack musters another go at the bear. No room for bears. Sometimes, even an alpha kicks up his heels. Gray male snatches up an irresistible play toy, the hide of the elk inviting a chase. Two pups are ready. The lighter pup tries to grab the hide, but he's cowed by his father's snarly face and rolls over in surrender. A perfect opportunity the darker pup steals the hide. Hanging on at all costs against a fierce rival will be vital later in this pup's life. Now, it's a three-way tug. Gray male is done, showing his teeth for emphasis. He's the alpha male and reasserts that position. Something disturbs White Wolf at her rest. Bad news. The Molly's pack. A clash could be disastrous. With tails high, the Molly's investigate the scent marks the Hayden pair had laid down. The pack is ready for aggression, even though they are the trespassers. The Molly sniff out who and how many Hayden there are. 
Their alpha male, a huge black wolf, has led the pack in many conflicts. The packs with more adult wolves and more males usually win these terrifying, sometimes mortal battles. With 14 members and lots of males, the Mollies could crush the Hayden pack. The younger Mollies sense something in the air. But it is the adults who know what they are undertaking. Holding a larger territory may make a difference for her pack, but her pups need their parents, and she could be killed. The Molly's breeding female leads the tracking, hot on the Hayden's trails. White wolf and gray male scrutinize the ground. Fortunately, the Molly's have moved on. Today, the packs avoid each other. But the Mollies have begun taking the Hayden Pack's measure, and the Hayden Pack is very aware of the Mollies' threat. Late autumn brings snow to Hayden Valley. These ravens are a courting pair, preparing to nest. Gray male grabs a leg from the remains of an elk carcass. The pups have been growing, putting on winter coats. The black pup and his pack mates are high spirited and in search of food. They approach their father, hopeful for a snack. This time, gray male isn't willing to share. but the pups are unbowed. Perhaps their mother has something for them. No, they are too old now to solicit puppy food. They try their sister, the two-year-old Beta. She simply shows her teeth. Here's the problem. A bear has taken over their carcass. So close to hibernation, it's not likely to surrender it without a fight. The bear has covered the carcass with dirt, a way that bears stake a claim. It's discouraging for a young wolf. With the bear hogging the food, the pups get restless. Their mother, too. Gray male chooses to wait out the bear but White Wolf makes a run at it, but no luck. The two-year-old and yearling beta females work with their mother repeatedly, ganging up on the bear, but the bear is quick and powerful. The wolves must be careful to keep clear, but they don't give up. A gray pup runs in to nab that prize his father has abandoned. He chases the ravens off, but they settle around him. Ravens can be as much of a nuisance as a bear. A mass of ravens may scour a carcass clean in hours. And ravens have their strategies, especially with pups. Like a wolf pack, the birds may try to coordinate. The adult females won't give up on that bear. Pups watch, learning how to press and how to be cautious. The two-year-old makes a rush, and this time she and her sister follow through just right. Famished pups tear into the meat. Even the adults are grabby. White Wolf digs out more of the carcass for everyone, even ravens. 
When you're hungry, it's easy to get derailed from chasing ravens. But when well-fed, the sport of chasing ravens gets renewed attention. The black pup may not be brave enough to chase off a bear, but he makes good sport of vanquishing ravens. White wolf claims her carcass. Gray male also decides to mark the carcass for good measure and then carries off another leg. Well fed, a pup may ponder a raven. Another pup joins in the preoccupation. Well, when you're a pup, the chances of winning, especially against a raven, are low. A raven looks up at his mate. She works on a stick, but then drops it to her mate in a sort of game between them. He'll bury it for later. A coyote draws the adult females back to the carcass. On her return, her mother exacts the required display of submission. Again, perhaps it's because mating season nears. The howls of the Molly's pack announce they have returned, and the Haydens answer back. The Hayden gray male bark howls, an alarm call of danger and distress. The Mollies shout him down. There are more of them, and they seem to know it. The Hayden pair howl back, but they seem shaken. The yearling seems aware of the danger. She raises her voice with her pack. The howls of the rival packs volley back and forth across the valley. They are assessing each other. Suddenly, Gray Male retreats, and his pack follows. White Wolf listens. But then, the adult Mollies make a move. They begin to travel, tails lifted, in the direction of the Hayden Howlers. The Molly's top female leads an attack. Everything about her body displays aggression. The Hayden pups have been hanging back. The Molly's voices spook them, and they go in search of their parents. The Hayden wolves scurry away from the advancing Molly's keeping close to each other. Gray Male knows they are outnumbered. He flees for his life. It is the last time he's seen alive. White Wolf is broken. She's mortally injured and dying and her mate is dead. She does not survive the night. A coyote makes off with a wolf's hindquarters, all that's left of gray male. 
The Mollies pack rally and triumph. They've gambled with their lives, and for now, they own the valley. The surviving Hayden wolves seek each other out. Their world is collapsed, and they must regroup. Two gray pups have gone missing. After a week of confusion and chaos, the yearling female leads the remaining two gray pups to join with a large gray male wolf she has encountered, a mystery wolf. His bloody face shows that he and the Hayden yearling hunted successfully together. The two establish a new pack that passes out of Yellowstone. So, the yearling and three pups leave Hayden Valley, the place where they were raised, hunted, and lost their parents. But one pack member remains. The two-year-old, the mother of the black pup, still travels Yellowstone. She longs to join even one wolf, perhaps that black male she'd mated with last year. He might be her best hope her chance to start again in Hayden Valley. <laughs>